Hello, my name is Brian, and today we're going to sketch two piecewise defined functions. Let's go ahead and take a look at our first example. We have two pieces, it's x squared when x is less than or equal to 1, and 3 minus x when x is greater than 1. So I just, I want to go over this real fast. When you have your number line and you have a piecewise function, that means you're jumping from one piece, one graph, to another. And we're doing that when x is 1. So when we're on the left-hand side of 1, we're supposed to look like this parabola x squared. When we're to the right of 1, we're supposed to look like the line 3 minus x. So we just have to be careful about what's happening at 1 and how we actually go from one graph to the other. Now probably the most important thing about graphing piecewise functions is knowing how to graph each individual piece on their own. So do we know how to graph x squared? So here's the graph of x squared. All right. On, over the entire number line. Now, notice I did do it dotted. Uh, I did this for a reason. I'll explain it in a little bit. And then the graph of 3 minus x, which is this diagonal line right here. Now, after I know how to graph these, what I'm going to do is I'm going to graph them on the same graph. Let's go ahead and do that now. So I have both graphs on the same one. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to darken each line on their respective domain. So here's the respected domain of x squared. Here's the respected domain of 3 minus x. All right. So let's start with, oh, and then you erase the parts you don't need. So let's try that with x squared. Now, x squared stops being x squared, right, at 1. All right, so let's go find 1. So there's 1. And if I were to plug 1 into x squared, I'm going to get 1 squared, which is 1. And so that puts me right here. Now it is a closed dot because I have the equal sign here. Remember, equal signs get closed dots. No equal signs would get an open dot. All right. Now, I'm supposed to look like x squared when x is less than 1. So that would be all over here. So I get to look like x squared. So I'm going to darken in x squared here. But I'm not supposed to look like x squared to the right of 1. So I'm going to come over here and I'm just going to erase all of that. So now that after I erase this and I darken in this side right here, that's what I get. So I'm halfway done. So now let's focus on 3 minus x. What I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in 1. So I'm going to get 3 minus 1, which is 2. So you go back to 1 and you're going to get a y value of 2. Now it's an open dot because I don't have that equal sign right here. Now, I'm not supposed to look like 3 minus x to the left of 1, so I'm going to erase all of this, and I'm going to keep all of that. Okay, didn't do a very good job of darkening in, but that's the idea. So now that after I erase this, and I leave this side, this is my final answer, and that was it. So that's the answer to example 1. Let's take a look at example 2. It's a larger piecewise defined function. We have three pieces. We have the square root of x plus 2. We have the absolute value of x. And then we have 4. So let's make sure that we can graph each one on their own. So the square root of x plus 2 is right here. Then we have the absolute value of x. And then we have 4. Now, again, this is a horizontal line, y equals 4. At this point, I'm going to place all three graphs on one big graph. And I'm going to do exactly the same thing as I did in the last example. All right, we're going to start from the very far left. So if, if I had my number line here, I'm jumping pieces at negative 1 and 1. And when I'm to the left of negative 1, I look like the square root of x plus 2. So here's the square root of x plus 2. It starts right here, and it's supposed to end at negative 1. Now, because of the equal sign, it gets a closed dot. So let's put a closed dot at negative 1, and so we get that right there. I'm going to darken in the piece I want, and I'm going to erase the parts of the squared function I don't want. After I erase that, this was what I would get for my square root piece right here. All right, let's move on to the absolute value of x. Now, the absolute value of x between negative 1 and 1, that would be this piece right here. Now, notice that at negative 1, we don't have the equal sign, so it would have been an open dot. 
but because there's already a closed dot here, we don't need to make it open anymore. All right, because they land on, you know, if you have an open dot and then you close it, it stays closed. But at positive one, right, it's going to remain an open dot because right now nothing's closing it and there's no equal sign. Okay, so here's what my absolute value of x looks like between negative one and one, just looks like this little v. And I'm going to erase everything I don't want, which is everything outside of one and negative one. After I erase all that, this is what I get. Now we're moving on to our last piece, piece sorry, which is four. So here's the line y equals four. Now I'm going to start looking like the line y equals four at one. So there's one, I'm a four. So that puts me here. Now it's a closed dot because of the equal sign. And then to the right of four, I'm just going to darken that in. And to the left of one, I'm not supposed to look like four, so I'm going to erase all this. And my final graph should look like that. So I have two examples here for you to practice. I have two. Um, this one's a little bit more complicated than the, the second one, but uh, try them out, and for solutions to these two examples and more information about NIU, please visit the following link down below.